Where we at? Man, we just touched down in San Diego. We're ready for the podcast, but we can enjoy ourselves. Some some shit may end up on the Patreon. We don't even know. We outside? And we ready. We outside. We ready. This all that you do right here? It don't smell it like roaches out here. This is the size of my room. <laughs> We're going to the spooky. I never had even two floors. <laughs> Yay! Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Are you impressed? No. Oh, hold, on. Hold, on. hold on. You need the key, bro. You need the key, homie. Put us fire. Es que no, es que no, dude, I can't take you guys nowhere. <laughs> luego, luego, luego se nota que no somos aquí. <laughs> oh, shit. We just came to uh, just take a picture and I like, go back. We told the guys downstairs, can we just borrow a room for like 10 minutes and then we're just leaving. So we're gonna clean it for them too, but huh. we're not. <laughs> hey, under all the ship. Put a Windex. Put a Windex. Put a Windex. <laughs> Fumbling the bag. No, 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 no. Just in case anybody wants to. <laughs> oh Bam. You know Hold on, we gotta get the cameras off first. Why? Ah, <laughs> she's spilling the tea, she's bro. She's spilling the tea. Don't spill the tea, tea. bro. Check it out. Look at where I'm gonna spend the birthday weekend. You guys know how far up we are? Let us know, Rick. I'm done. Doing For the good. 11 floors. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take a shot to me. You're building a cocktail. Alright, I'm gonna go somewhere. I'm with it though. We can do that. No, oh, you can tell me when. Alright, that's good. Cool. <laughs> it's like that video. She put two ounces of, of vodka <laughs> into half the bottle. For real. Alright, okay, so have some good conversations with it. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yeah, that was a whole fucking drink on that one. Alright, shout out to the rock. We out here in San Diego with, dude, this is a legend. I'm glad we're sitting here that. with Chris, a.k.a. Topo, a.k.a. the guy that deadlifts eight plates in yeah, Chancla. Yeah. So let's go. Episode it's coming down. It's a movement. It's a movement, bro. How are you doing? I'm good. And I appreciate you guys coming down, inviting me, doing the damn thing. So we have I'm excited to. to be here, man. I'm really excited to be here. We had to, man. I mean, the, the whole thing when podcasting is we're in L.A. and it's attainable to a lot. And then there's people like yourself that are not from LA, yeah. but it's making a you're making big noise with your platforms. I that. Thank you so much. For you've been in the fitness industry for how long now? Man, honestly, probably eight, ten years actually. Damn. I mean, when I first came out, it wasn't like it was kind of just like it was just my joy and I like to lift and whatever. But yeah, and then I got the opportunities that I did, and I just ran with them and I took them, and it just kept growing and kept growing, and I just and I had education behind me. So like when I first came out, nobody had education. It was kind of like that meathead thing, like oh, we're just gonna lift and like bang weights and then see what happens whatever just be a meathead and then i was like came in i was like i'm kind of a meathead but then i got education too yeah and i like i like that i have education and then people just stuck with me because of that i mean everybody i've ever been with they knew that the value i had in terms of like how i looked at like fitness like it wasn't education. it wasn't just show up bang out the weights and exactly bam, go home because i was like that when i was younger so i played ball growing up and then i'd and i'd go to the gym and i'd work out but then I wouldn't get better, right? So, like, I would hit bench press every single day. And I hit arms every single day, like the like Bradley Martin, C.T. Fletcher type stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so I never got any better, and I got hurt, and I was playing ball. So I was like, man, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep doing this to myself, and then just keep hurting my shoulders because I end up tearing my shoulder in high school ball. So then that's what at, initially made me go dive deep into like education. Mm. And then I started training people when I was 15 years old, which is absolutely insane. Like people didn't know that. So like, yeah. um, a little higher. Not bad. You good? Good. Okay, good. We're still trying to figure this yeah. shit out. It's all good. <laughs> so then I actually um, uh, started educating myself. And then I started training people at 15 years old, which is kind of insane because people were trusting me. And I was, like, writing programs for them. So I've been doing this. What were you lifting at 15 years old? I bench pressed 
380 at 15 years old. And I power cleaned like 370 or some crazy stuff like that. What? Bro, I'm serious. Like, it was, I was just like freaking nature and I just loved it. You know what I mean? And yeah. then, <laughs> a bad story. It's kind of embarrassing. One of my coaches was like, man, this kid spends so much time in the gym. Like, he's like a real animal. And then my real wake up call was he was like, you play like, uh, you look like Tarzan, play like Jane. And that fucking, that made me like reevaluate, Ooh. like, damn. I look like a monster in the gym, but then I'm soft on the field. So then that's what made me rechange the way I was training. So like I looked at training in a way that um, I could be a better football player. Yeah. And then I started looking at the things like the injury prevention, like how do I take care of my shoulders, how to how to take care of my knees. And that's when I started really educating myself. And then so now with my platform, I use those moments of me being a young athlete because I can relate those to the people that are in that position right now. Facts. So I love giving back to the people that are that age right now. Because taking it back for everybody watching you, your platform, obviously when we come on podcasts, when certain individuals come on podcasts, they think, oh, you're going to drop, you're going to name drop, you're going to throw low blows and this and that. But in reality, it's, it's a moment to take back, like look at, back at everything you have done. Yeah. You, outside earlier, you said, you you and your boy Gino, simply Gmails. Yeah. Everybody, but everybody started knowing about you when you went through string cartel, right? Yeah. 100%. Platform, <laughs> even walking in, you like, you look familiar. I was like, yeah, bro, I see you at the yeah. fitness expos. Yeah. I mean, that experience of being at a fitness expo, all these people looking up to you, coming to take pictures, yeah. what is that feeling like? To be completely honest, it's it's um, it's um humbling. I mean, I mean, you'll hear that I say, people say that a lot, but you never know until you sit in front of, like, hundreds of people sitting in line. Yeah. And then, which, which is kind of, this is surreal for me because we're at the Hard Rock – and the convention center right there. I had a park at the convention center, and I that just brought me back to my fitness expo days. Yeah. Right. So I, I was actually reliving that experience when I was walking over here. So I love that this is a full circle. Like I'm, t- I'm getting to talk about <laughs> it right now because yeah. Um, I never get to talk about how what it made makes you feel like to to really impact people, and that word is so strong for me. Impact, power, change, those type of things. I got to experience those things on a grand scale. Like it was like. You, I, we would literally for 12 to 15 hours be standing, nothing to eat, nothing to drink, and then we would be um, we would be pressured to just sit there the whole time because these people are standing in line three or four hours. If I get up and I go use the bathroom, go take a dump, that's kind of selfish on my end because like this person might miss the opportunity to get to say something to you yeah. that they've been wanting to say to you for the a whole long time. time. Yeah. So I, we would have people crying, people um, like freaking out. And we almost had a few people pass out and like th- those type of things. And that when you see those things, you get to see how powerful your voice actually is. What's one thing that one of your, your fellow, you know, fanatics told you and it sat with you for the longest? I think um, this one time this guy had quoted me from a video I did like six years ago. And Man. then to me, it wasn't necessarily what he said to me or like the contents of what he said. It was the impact that that, what I specifically said, impacted him for that long for him to wait till he got to meet me to say that to me. Yeah. And that, to me, made me realize that uh, to choose your words wisely, because I'd be on a video and be like, say something stupid, like, Big Joe's about to break your fucking legs. Like, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. something like that stuck with us. Yeah. And then people would walk up and be like, what's up, Topo? I'm bringing him to break your fucking legs. <laughs> and it, it's funny to me, but it's like, damn, people hang on to that. Yeah. You know? And then that made me realize how powerful and how your platform can really change people's lives. So what's the, what do you think it's the difference between the the Topo that was when he was a strength cartel, which the Topo is now? I like, that, I like that question. So I was actually thinking about it when I was driving over here, right? And I was yeah. like, man, what would I say if um, I got to compare where I was to where I am? And then, so there's a story that I heard, I think it probably was on TikTok. And this guy was telling a story about, um, like, if you're, if you're hungry, right? If you're driving home and you're just super hungry and then yeah. you're thinking about what you want to eat and you're like, man lasagna sounds really good or like lasagna with garlic bread sounds so good and then you're like i'm gonna go get some of that and then you have that second thought it's like no nah, i'm not gonna go get that F- screw that i'm just gonna go home and eat some snacks you go home and eat snacks and then you get full the difference between full and being fulfilled to me means everything i was full when i was with shrink cartel i'm fulfilled now so like i every time hey. i put something up on on like any type of content i put up i look at it like can i get a million views or can I change a million lives? And that, that to me, just maneuvering my mind process perspective wise yeah. changed the game for me. It really changed yeah, the game yeah. for me. I wake up every morning meditating and being like, 
what kind of views can I get from that? That's where I was when I was doing those type of videos to now it's like, how many people can I change to become a better person? Or how many people can I change in their workout so they can get a better workout so they're safer? Is there something like that you missed from that type of double that was back then? I mean, the camaraderie. I mean, that you'll always miss the team atmospheres. Yeah. Because back then, it was so aligned to be um, we over me all the time, right? The team means more than what the individual needs. So we would fly out to expos, put the expos together, doing all those things, and it was the camaraderie behind that. Did we go out? We got so much free bottle service, bro. I don't like that's what blows my mind. Low key is like we would go places and be like, "Hey, yo, everything's taken care of. Like, fuck it, like fucking six bottles, whatever." And they'll just bring girls. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like, what the hell is going on? You know? Like, we're just like from a, a little city who didn't know what was going on, and then we just getting flown out to Texas, Arizona, all these places, and people were taking care of us, like treating us like. A-list celebrities, for real. Damn. Like, shut down the lobby for us type shit. Like, police escorts type stuff. That that was the type of shit was going yeah, on You guys us. are rolling with, like, what, yeah. 30, 30 heads deep and I mean, shit? I think one of the times that I was, like, really, like, whoa, this is kind of nuts is that we had bottle service next to Chris Brown, and he, like, said, what's up to us? He was like, what's up, bro? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you keep shit. doing your guys' thing. Like, and that, that was, like, whoa. Okay, now it's getting, like, to a point that, like, we have to be careful with how we're maneuvering ourselves because now we have people trying to say – uh, make stories up about us, you know what I mean? Like, just because we had this image or persona, like, yeah. just because we look like gangsters, had neck tattoos or whatever, they thought that we were that persona. And that's why I messed with Big at the beginning so much is because he wanted to change that image. And he uh, he sat down with us and he was like, yeah, I went to prison, I did all those things, but, like, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to promote something positive. And that's what got me roped in. I'm like, that's all I'm about. Yeah. That's all I'm about. I'm trying to change the world in a good way. Not leave yeah. this place like shittier than I found it, but well, why would I be here then? You know what I mean? That I always thought that. So he, it stuck with me when he said those things to me, and then the camaraderie, the team atmosphere, those things. You always miss those things, definitely, right? But then I still have my guys, so it's like when we get together, it's like nothing ever missed. So we like we're laughing, we're joking, we're cracking jokes. No matter how big any of us get, yeah. we're never too big to, to get chopped down by the homies. That's, <laughs> and that's real shit, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I make fun of Bruce so much and Gino <laughs> so much that, like, if someone just saw him walk around the street, like, damn, that fool want to fight you? Like, you know, like, he want to catch hands with you, saying some, like, crazy shit to you. Yeah. But that's, like, you know, that's the type of shit that you really look forward to. And then, and that's the type of shit that you miss when you, you know, don't have it no more. And that's something that was I got from after I got playing uh, college ball. Yeah, Strength Cartel was that brotherhood that I needed at the time because I felt lost. Wait, is that Strength Cartel the brotherhood that you needed or that you were missing in your life? I think it was something I needed at that time where I was. Yeah. And then right now where I'm at is what I need now for me best. So, like, I don't need that type of team atmosphere, blah, blah, now. But, like, I still have that core group of guys that yeah. that I can, like, bounce ideas off of, that we can go do things and enjoy life and do those things. But, like... I had to have the separation. I had to get pulled from the group because I had, I know I have bigger things for me. I know I had to like, I had to like climb the rope and then be where I want to be in terms of like where I thought I was powerful at. Like I was good at and what, what God, well, his purpose for me in that. Was it tough for you when you went away from the gym that you guys owned? It was, I mean, during that time. So I, I won't get too much into it, but I lost my yeah. kids around that time for like four or five months. And that was the darkest time I've ever had in mm -hmm. my life. And, so I went through, like, all these legal things with, like, the gym and, like, in my personal life. So then yeah. I realized that I had to separate and then I had to isolate because I, I knew that I was a product of all the trauma that I was going through. And that's what made all my things wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I had to re redissect my mind and, like, kind of go in and re engineer why I was acting the way I was acting or how I was being as a person or was I the reason why bad things were happening to me. So I had to take a step back and work on my mental health Yeah, and then really look and be like, I can actually re-engineer my brain in a way that I can become the person I want to be. Thanks. And I'm not stuck in this, like, in this shitty place. And I can change. And yeah. I can change. I can change my environment. I can change my vibration. I can change everything about what I'm doing. And then I'm the creator of my own reality, which what is real life. What I, what I thought at that time, and it was scary for me, but I took a leap of faith. And that's Ooh. what it really it took for me. So about that leap of faith, a lot of people struggle with taking that leap of faith, getting out of... The section that they're in, right? I, I believe if you think about it, I think life is about sections. Right. This section is all about like partying, you know, being with friends, not really having a purpose. Next section, you have people that are finding their purpose, doing their things that make them fulfilled. And then you have those ones that are sitting right in the middle because they want to come this way and party with their friends, be right. there. But in reality, they want they just want to wake up happy, be truly happy, change 
changing how people, but they're stuck. Right. They don't want to take that leap of faith. Right. So what do you think is that like that thing people miss when they don't want to give themselves that leap of faith? That's right. Get a burp. Fucking happy dads, dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Fucking happy dad. <laughs> All right. So the way I look at it is you're exactly where you need to be exactly when you need to be there. So when you have those feelings of like, I kind of want to party right now. I kind of want to like live my life and be free. Yeah. Most of the time, man, live your life, be free, go experience life and make mistakes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then when you have that eagerness to be like, fuck, I want something more, dude. Follow that feeling, lean into that feeling because that's your, your body's and your mind is just, it's, it's evolving into a point that your body and your mind are trying to catch up with your aspirations. So then, then now you got to just trust where you are. So with me, the biggest thing is self-awareness. Knowing where my head is, where my body is, and they have to make sure they're aligned with my higher self. So we're that, that, that self that I'm trying to be, yeah. right? The one that's guiding me through my daily life and like, hey, don't do that stupid shit. And you're <laughs> like, oh, no, I'm going to do it anyways. And then I get in trouble, right? So like yeah. that self that's telling you where to go that you're not trusting, start trusting that shit. And that's really where I got to a position that I started meditating like two or three hours a day. On some crazy stuff, like I would just be sitting there idle for three or four hours, and I and I wouldn't move, and I'd just be in a trance. And then that, in that trance, I would find my higher self. Ooh. I'd find the, those voices that I could separate the voices that I knew were the wrong ones because of the past things that I've been through, and they were just trying to protect me through whatever I was doing. Yeah. And then I learned how to separate that, and then find the voice that I knew was my higher self, the one that was like, "This is where you're supposed to be. Yeah. This is who you're supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to think." So I trusted that voice. And Dang. you kind of have an intuition of like, oh, that's that. There it is. Like, yeah. I, I know I shouldn't be doing this. But, I know I shouldn't be do, like, but doing yeah, these people drugs still do it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah 100%. People, I think, I mean, they're just a product of their own selves, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing for the last like two or three weeks, I've been telling a lot, like him and her, it's a lot of people just self sabotage themselves. Yeah, 100%. They have the talent and the ability to be big and change and be happy, help other people. But because they're still stuck in all the events that happen in their life, 100%. oh man, I don't deserve to be happy. Yeah. I don't deserve to yeah. to be loved and to be cared about. Like it just it is what it is. I'll, I'll be happy one day. It's yeah. like no, bro. Like go yeah. go go take over. Like it's your time and it's right now. Yeah. If you want to be doing social media, go do it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if mm -hmm. people like it. If they don't like it, like yeah. you go put whatever you want. Your you maintain the power in the palm of your hand. Yeah. People don't believe or they don't see that the strength that they really have can go a long way. Like there, there's moments, right, that we all go through. We go through our darkest moments. Yeah. And we're just like, fuck, man, I, don't, I can't get out of this. Fuck, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, bro, it's not. Like, really? You, you, can, you can get out of this. Yeah. You know, the misinterpretation that a lot of people have is because you can have everything in the world yet be so empty. You can have all the glitz, glamour, the fame, and everything, yet be so empty. Yeah. You said it earlier. You were part of Strength Tell. You guys were at the highest moment, and then you started going through personal stuff, and you were in your worst place yeah. in the midst of having mm -hmm. everything at that same time. So the piece of advice for someone that's in that dark hole right now that doesn't know how to get out, what would you tell? You could think about it. You could tell yourself, what would you tell a young a young 15-year-old Topo mm -hmm. and someone in your age that wasn't during that time. Like, what can you tell them if they came to ask you, like, double, like, how do I do it? Right. I think the biggest piece of advice I could give would be don't be scared of yourself. Because in the moments that I was alone is where I found out who I was supposed to be. And I think a lot of times through our past experiences and the things that we've gone through is that we're scared to sit and see what we're actually thinking about. Mm -hmm. And so we like distract ourselves with drugs, alcohol, like lots of people and stuff like that. And I have a lot of friends that like they're scared to be alone and I can see that. So they, they, they try to distract themselves with girls, money, clothes, whatever, just the things that slow. They don't have to sit down and think about the things that they've been through. Yeah. Like don't be scared of yourself. Right. Like sit down, heal from what you've been through because your higher self is really asking you to do that. So like when you sit down and you have to adjust and then like really talk to yourself and go to battle with yourself, mm -hmm. you realize that you're strong enough to win this battle. And then it, and if you have gone through the depression, depression, the uh, addictions, the stuff like that, you have something different that people don't have. And there's some people that they like when they say God puts their his best words through the hardest struggles. That shit's real. Yeah. Like the guys that I've seen that have been through it, the guys that have been to jail, that have been shot, been all these crazy things, are 
like angels in the sense that that's what God meant them to go through so they can make a change in the world. They just have to realize they can make that change. Yeah. And so when I see guys that have gone through the most is the guys that I invest in most too. Cause like I see that they have something, they have something that they've been through. They have a story. So that's one of my biggest things right now is I have all these really great people in my personal life and they've been, they've been through all this crazy shit, like drug addict shit, like, fucking like getting robbed or whatever like you know what i mean just crazy shit yeah and i sit down and i listen to these stories and i hear how emotional it is and how hard it was for them and i watch them where they are right now yeah and i see that they actually sat with themselves and every single person sat with themselves went to war with themselves in the mirror and they fucking won yeah. and that empowered them and empowered them in a way that they can make change they didn't know that they could be in a position to make change because maybe they don't have the social media following or they don't have the respect by the peers that I do. So, like, that's a, a big purpose for me is to getting those people people to realize that they got a big voice. They just haven't been heard yet. Yeah. And then so when uh, when I first came out and I was doing, like, the instant, uh, Instagram thing or, like, social media thing, I was scared because I didn't want to come off gimmicky and be like, hey, follow me. Like, uh, whoop -de -whoop, I want to be Instagram famous, all yeah. those things, right? <laughs> and I had this guy, like, sit down with me and he was like, He's like, dude, you're, you know that you're like amazing, right? And I'm like, hey man, thank you, I appreciate that. Like, you know how like when everyone's complimenting, yeah. like, fuck it, whatever, dude. Like, <laughs> no, I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, good one. Good, thanks, big dog. But I was like, that's, uh, that's kind of what he was saying to me. He's like, you're amazing. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And he's like, you have a lot to offer. And I was like, okay, yeah, I do. He's like, you're really smart. Like, you look how how you help people on an individual basis. And I was like, yeah, I guess I do. And he's like, people want to follow you, but they don't know you exist yet. Ooh. And when he said that to me, I was like. Yo, for real, kind of, huh? Like, if yeah. they knew I existed, they'd follow me because I have something to offer. Yeah, that's, like, similar to, like, we were telling her yesterday because we were there at, at the club, and us three were just vibing. Yeah. You know, she put her shades on, and then we... I thought you were going to say she took her shirt off. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no. like, y'all really vibing. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's mostly, like, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan yeah. something would do that. Oh, uh, it's funny. As soon as he pulled up with an adios, I was like, fuck, it's over. Yeah, dude. I was like, it's really? over. Well, that's how you know she's about to get weird. My but pen, my, funny, I drank an adios, and my pennies exploded in Mexico. Oh, so I don't fuck with adioses, for real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, for real? That many? What do you think I can chug? Damn, dude. Jeez. Oh, you chug that shit? Yeah. Damn. Good for you, homie. <laughs> His yeah. birthday's on Monday, so oh, for real. apart for, for coming for business, podcasting, you know, have, you happy early birthday life, for Dylan. Fuck. Happy birthday, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so, end up next to the toilet like 10 minutes, like, what the fuck that fuck <laughs> Nah, so, like, we are telling her yesterday, because, like I said, this week, and when it comes out, it's been a couple weeks then, but... We all go through our, our weeks and our times where it's like, fuck, we end the day and we're just like, damn, bro, like, yeah. we going through this. Yeah. I'm ready for the weekend. And we look we look forward to this weekend, not just because, like, the podcast and meeting you, but, like, yo, like, we deserve this. Like, yeah. You, we oh, we yeah, really man. deserve to be oh, happy. Yeah, and, like, yeah. the videos that I posted one yesterday, her and, and we're taking videos of her, like, yo, like, you're fucking thriving. Yeah. See how happy you can really be when you, you get those negative people out of your life. Yeah. There's like there's an anchor. There is self sabotaging, but there's also people, and they're in your own group, that are just snakes in the grass. That oh, yeah. like, hey man, I'm gonna start this. Bruh, oh I man, I'm even, I'm happy yeah. for you. Turn around, and they're just giving that bad vibe. That yeah. bad, nah, bro, you ain't gonna do shit. Yeah. Fuck that food. Like it's like whoa. But it's and you like, know the crazy thing about that is that I would always tell my girl this because she she gives her heart to everybody, and like I had to tell her that they don't know what they do. As God would say that they yeah. do not know what they do. They don't know that they're suckers. They don't know that they, they energy suck and then they put bad seeds in your head. Like they don't know what they do because they've never healed. They never went through the the steps in trying to get to that position. They know that something's wrong. Yeah, they all go, they all use that same op, but they have a great heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah they, they may say that. They, they may have a great heart, but they just don't know how to you value yours. You have great feet. Don't mean you just need to be a runner. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> oh. you can have a whole lot of great things, but it doesn't mean that it's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the changing gears a little bit. Do you feel like people misinterpret you because, one, you're fucking huge and buff. I second, <laughs> second. I just want to look good naked. <laughs> and I look like shit, honestly. I'm chubby still. Like, <laughs> That's the reality. Yeah. Tatted from here, half your body, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fucking sick. Yeah, so dude, that can, shit hurt. Yeah. Can we get the storyline behind yeah. the whole, your whole tat? Well, like, I'm partial, so I'm almost like uh, 25% and then 25% Filipino and half white. I got that because that's like a tribal thing in terms right. of like 
um, the, the high chiefs and stuff like that. But I kind of wanted to make a, a whole little twist on it. So I had a, a view in my mind of what I wanted the tattoos to be. And it was like, um, I, I didn't want to touch my left side, like almost like your good and bad sides, like your devil and your angels, right? Mm. So this was my my tribal, my warrior side. And I'm, I'm going to do my whole leg and do the whole damn thing. But I wanted that to leave my left alone because I wanted to know that there's that yin and yang. There's good and bad. There's good and evil. And that all incorporates into one circle. Like, that's, that, everything ties in together. And you can't have one without the other. So I looked at that in my tattoos. Like, I'm going to blast whole one side of me because I do have that, like, loaked up side that's, like, ready to go with everybody. But I have this side that's, like, and this is the side of my heart. So this, this heart is pure. So, like, this side is pure for me. Yeah. I don't want, I'm not going to touch it. I, there's nothing I will do on this side forever, the rest of my life. People ask me that, like, why would you want to do one side? You're like, oh, uh, Oreo <laughs> type shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, that's how I looked at it. Like, yeah. everybody has a good side and a bad side. You can't run from the bad side and expect all to be good because then that's how you compensate. You overcompensate and you'll end up one day freaking the fuck out and blowing up and then your bad side will truly shine through. But if you know how to, you know how to, like, look at your bad side and be like, yeah, I have these bad tendencies but my good outweighs my bad in that sense, and they balance yeah. each other out, and I think that's what it's about. And that, that's the reality. Like, mm -hmm. no one's 100% a saint. Yeah. Even the people, and not being religious, but even the people that go and give themselves, like, bro, like, they got their bad side. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, but it's how do you balance it, right? Exactly. What is the exactly. balance that you have from the good side and the bad? Does the good outweigh the bad? Yeah. Or does the bad like, what, like, what happens? Yeah. It's like, well, whatever works for you. Yeah. We're, we're throwing gems. You're throwing gems to everybody watching this, hearing this right now. But at the end of the day, it's how do you handle yourself? Yeah. Does your bad mm -hmm. is literally like devilish and like your good does nothing? Yeah. Or are you showing just the good to, to, sh to hide the bad and then your bad comes out when it yeah. when you, like least expected or when people start trusting you, then your bad side comes out. But that's one thing I had to uh, fight. Like you go back to um, how was I perceived because of the tattoos, because my circle I was running with. And I used to gangbang when I was younger, and I just, like, gave it up because of sports. But that's one thing that I've always battled, and that's one thing that I fucked with my crew so tough is because we all had this look, and we were completely opposite of what people were perceiving us as. And I used to love being at my gym, being the owner of my gym, my own business, stuff like that, and then people would walk in and be like, can I speak to the owner? And I'm like, oh, I am the owner. What's <laughs> up? Like, can <laughs> I like, help you wait, with something? Wait, hold on. Let me go get him. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> hello. I'm the owner. Like, So I love doing that because people yeah. like to judge you. Off of what off you of look that. life, yeah. like what you've been through, all these things. But, like, that's the thing is that when you're more self-aware of yourself, you realize that every moment you get the decision to become who you want to be or or express who you are truly. Yeah. And then I would go and then we'd go to these expos. And then so that that's where I found that power in self to realize that our voices were meant not to be only by ourselves. We had to express ourselves. And in that, the, the movement happened, right? And yeah. so I loved having people see us and be like, look at those thugs. Like, what? why are they even here? And then they would see us with a line and be like, whoa, those yeah. guys are powerful. Like, there's something about those guys that people fuck with. Yeah, like I, I was watching uh, actually the recap of of the Fit Expo, and they had like a huge line, right? Like, But just to touch up what you just said, like the people will fuck with you when they resonate with you and what and your message. Mm -hmm. Not because of the image and like, oh my God, he looks so good or she looks so good. It's like, yo, like, hey, what you did and what you said just helped me. Yeah. I mentioned earlier when <laughs> every time <laughs> your boy's going to go into PR, you fucking spit on your hand. Oh yeah. Boom. Yeah. He get he gets so emotional he starts crying. And it's that, hey, what you did there, bro, I feel that. Yeah. Like me personally, I could tell you, like, when I'm about to go through a PR and I swear to God, like I'll Put on the most saddest song on my playlist. Oh, me too. I do that shit. I too. put it like I put on like Hill Song. Oh, I'm like Bro. crying right there. Yeah. Like oh fuck, and boom, hit it. And people are like, dude, like you don't get hyped. I'm like, that is my hype. Yeah, I gotta go through my darkest, my my yeah. darkest moments. Remember it, yeah. and I gotta know if I don't hit this, I didn't climb out of it. Yeah, but if I hit this, I got out of it. Yeah, it's like a graduation almost. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as you you bust out whatever numbers it is, you're just like. All right, man, and oh, pal, good shit, dude. I was like, we're and not I love done. that you bring that up. When, when so when me and Bruce uh, were training together, and like every day was like that, he would get all crazy. He would cry after all this stuff. He would cry and be like, "I'm scared of what people will think of me." Yeah. And then I remember those moments and being like, uh, I try to coach him through it, right, the best way I could. 
And I knew that we were ahead of our time because now mental health for men is starting to become a thing. And like, we have to speak up, we have to speak out and we have to try and help each other during this time because like, we're all like, what is this? I think I just saw a a meme that says 75% of all suicides are men. It's a lot, dude. It's a lot. So then in this moment, I had to tell him that he had to be himself. You have to express it in a way that one to a million people could be affected by what you're going through. And then I remember the look in his eye and trusting in that. Because yeah. we, at first, when he would post those videos, or we post those videos of him crying, the amount of backlash and negativity, oh, he's a fucking pussy, like, all that shit. And that really, as someone who's not stable, reading those comments... It can fuck with you. Yeah, dude, it, it can really you. throw you through a spiral. And yeah. so the, I had to be there in those moments for him and, like, like let him know that it's okay to be vulnerable. And, and vulnerability is growth, and you're helping a ton of people be more vulnerable with themselves. Yeah. And then they're going to come to terms, and then they're going to they're trying to adjust and then try to take care of those traumas that never were taken care of because a lot of times we were taught as men, don't cry, just straight edge, like just do it. Just go through it and then make sure that everybody else is good. And then at the end of the day, if you have a, have a chance, like have a drink or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cry by yourself in your car or whatever. I can't imagine. I can't even think about how many times I sat in my car and cried before I walked in to see my kids. Like that, that alone put me in a position that was like, I need to speak up. I need to make a difference in other people's lives. So one of the big things is mental health for me. Yeah, I want to make sure that if that if someone else is thinking about taking their life because of things they can't talk about, that they take a second and they take another day. I think the addict thing is, like, if you can't go one day, go one hour. If you can't go one hour, go one minute. If you can't go one minute, go one second. If you can't go right now, just wait one more minute. Just wait. See what happens in one minute. And then most of the time something happens that either one takes you out of that mindset or something great happens in your darkest moment. I remember thinking I was going to give up. I didn't have my kids. I lost my house. I lost all my businesses. And I was thinking, like, God, why am I I'm just going to give up? But then I always remembered how, since I was a young kid, that I always knew there was a lesson in every thing that was going on with me. So I, I would sit with myself and be like, what am I, what do I need to learn right here? What, what, did, what am I trying to teach myself? What do I need to, to evolve with? Yeah. And then that mindset, it was still hard. I'd still go through it and have those times of like, man, I, I still want to give up. Like, this is way too hard. <laughs> yeah, we started. What are we doing here? Anyways, All right, we just wanted to show you guys Shout out to Baseball MX. How do you pronounce it? M- MX? Oh my, come on. Baseball MX? <laughs> Base- how do you pronounce it? Like, for real. Baseball MX. Baseball MX shop. Baseball MX. Thank you. We're going to show you guys what they sent us. She's a no sabo girl. So I am not. Okay. Excuse her for so the you- There, I got it. All right, I got it. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. What do we got in here? We got some. Some okay. Jalisco stickers. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay, okay, we got the. Ready, Dylan? I bet, I bet. Oh, sheesh! Oh, dang! Oh, look at that. Oh, damn, you feel that. Oh, material oh, girl. Material girl. Material. Sheesh. Yeah, that's that. Nice. That's sick. And then we got the, the switch with this one. Oh, this is the Mega one. Cake her? I oh, bet, shit, that's almost hard. Do a little try on, do a little try on, huh? Yes. That one's hard. And then we, ooh. Some t-shirts, they hooked it up. Nice. And then should we open them? Let's open them. Let's open them. Okay. Pacifico. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Her damn. And I was hey. hard. It's a part of that in Cancun as you did. Oh my baseball and my equis. I remember in those moments like uh thinking I was gonna give up. And then and then I was looking to other people to help me, right? So I was like God, give me a hand. Like uh, I need, I need help, whatever. And then in those moments, being a man, you either one yeah. look weak, or two, they don't know how to help you properly. Do you think people depend on on that type of help? I so don't, like, so if I'm going through my stuff, right, and I want to be a victim, I want to be like, bro, I'm going through this, so I can't do this. But can you help me? Yeah. But it's like, yo, I feel like I could help you as much as I can. But if you're not willing to do that shit on your own. Yeah then there's only so much I can do. So I think it's important to speak up and want help, but I think it's also important to teach the type of help people need, which mm. is that. Yeah. Like, I can only help you so much. You have to sit down with yourself and fucking... Self-reflect. Yeah, exactly. Self-reflect. And that's where you got to be your your best and worst critic. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, I know I did a great job, but fuck, I know I got more. Yeah. But how like you said, it, give, it a, give it a moment. Keep yeah. working. It's going to pay off. Mm-hmm. 
the PR didn't come in, well, fuck, go back to the drawing board. Exactly. Work out mm-hmm. this, is this, this, boom. So next time you show up again, bro, crush that motherfucker yeah. because you can. Yeah. There was a, I'm, if people watching, I'm sure everybody ran into this TikTok and he was like, you, some guy was like, you have to be a monster. Yeah, uh, Peterson. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that fool. I love that fool. Yeah, he was like, you got to be a monster. Like people tell you like you can't, you cannot, but it's like you have yeah. to. And it, in reality, like if you're not, like we're bringing up men's mental health. Like if you're not being that strong, macho, hardworking, non-crying, non-complaining, mm-hmm. like you're going to be the best. It's like, no, mm-hmm. not now. Mm-hmm. Maybe before, like for yeah. my parents and, and and all our older and generations, but not now, bro. Yeah. There's too many people that were, that were losing yeah. because they couldn't talk about what they were going through, yeah. that they found it a lot easier to do that. Yeah. We... Us as men, we bring a big percentage of taking our own lives. Yeah. But both, I've seen both sides. I've seen girls, my own best friend. I've seen other people. And it's like, no, yeah. we need to talk yeah. about this. If someone's going to talk about this and make this normal, yeah. it's us. Yeah. I see and I love your platform because today even you posted, I think it was like two hours ago, and it was powerful. Like, yeah. you're using your platform for the greater good now. Yeah. It's not like, let's just go party, pop bottles, you know, Girls, this, this, this. It's like, nah, man. There's a big, there's a bigger purpose. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. There's, you can always go have fun. Yeah, have fun. Do your thing. You, you have to have fun in your journey. Yeah. But if you have a big purpose and you got a big voice that people are watching you, you have to use it. Yeah, you got to be mm-hmm. fulfilled. You have an obligation, and I look at it as an obligation to my kids because Ooh. I know that one day they're gonna be old enough to, to scroll through Instagram. They're going to see gonna dad do everything, bro. <laughs> and then God forbid I'm not here. Right. And yeah. God forbid something happens and I pass away, whatever. That's the only thing they're going to have of me. Yeah. So when they look through and they see people commenting like, oh, my God, like this is so inspir- inspiring. Like, I can't believe like you really changed my life. And if I went through my DMs and like looked at all how many people are reaching out, being like, dude, this meant something to me. You know, yeah, fuck and yeah. that's one thing I was about to say earlier is that with the, the strength cartel shit, we didn't look that great. We looked like a bunch of fat dudes with strength cartel <laughs> shirts on. But the thing is that people related to us. Yeah. They related in a, in a way that we could inspire them. It's because there, there's a majority of people in the gym that are cholos, older men, tattoos, yeah, yeah, yeah. lifting Chicago heavy. Shit, yeah, yeah, and then you, you see them with strength guard time. Like, hey. Yeah, <laughs> for real. That's what it was. You can relate to us. So, like, I, I took that as a position, like, my kids one day will scroll through my thing. And if I can get to the position that I can inspire them 20, 30 years from now, yeah. then I know I'm fulfilled. Like, I know that. Because that's all I truly, if I really ripped everything down and, like, what do I actually care about? I don't yeah. care about money, cars, clothes, anything like drugs, anything like that. I care about what my kids think about me. Yeah. And I care about what they're going to what they're gonna be like when they're older. Because if, I, if they're a, a pure reflection of me and how I am, and if they walk around and become horrible people, yeah. that is a pure reflection. And I didn't do my job as a father. Regardless, because their environment is going to shape them in ways that I can't. You know, like really, uh, yeah. like do or can't change. But if I can teach them and give them tools, a tool belt to be able to maneuver themselves in those environments, yeah, fuck yeah. Then that's what I'm here for, yeah. right? You got to trust that you you are a great parent and that you're a great mentor and all those things. And that's what I wake up every day because I'm I'm genuinely a lazy fucking person. I wake <laughs> up I'm like I don't do shit today, dude. Fuck, I'm gonna watch a TV, do smoke tree, whatever. You know what I mean? Like I'm just be lazy today. Yeah. And in those moments, uh, I have to re snap myself back into my purpose and my fulfillment. And then every morning, I don't want to post nothing. I don't. I'm like, I don't feel like, like, oh, it's too hard thinking about all the like creative content, whatever. But my fulfillment comes in. My higher self comes in, and, and then those moments, I I can choose yeah. because I know that if you separate yourself from your mind and your habits, they're not real fucking things, dude. They're just like things that are made from the things that you've been through, yeah. just to protect you or or to not protect you, like okay. if they're good or bad, right? So I learned how to re-engineer those thoughts and be like. That's a momentary thing. I'm only lazy because that's my <laughs> mind trying to get me to stop, do, to not do the things that I need to yeah. do. So I learned how to separate those two. Like when you wake up, how do you feel? I'm tired, man. I don't want to do shit. Yeah. And then when you say <laughs> tired, you really believe tired. And that's true. That's a real thing. Yeah. Right? Like we we came back from, <laughs> from dinner yesterday. They both took a nap and we're, we're already like, he woke up. He's like, let's go. Take a shot. Yeah. And I was like, fool, let's go. Like yeah. they were sleeping. I was outside on TikTok live just fucking yeah. doing it. Both knocked out, woke up, let's go. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. We're like, yo, let's go. Nah, I don't want to go, I'm tired. I'm yeah. like, whoa, yeah. we waited all week to be here. It's one life that we have. You got to make yeah. the best of it. Mm-hmm. We don't know when the day comes. Yeah. We have no idea when the opportunity is going to come again. Exactly. You got to take advantage. 
there's people that don't want to see you happy, and it's, it is what it is. Yeah. I always say like, fuck them. Yeah. Like they're gonna if they're not gonna love it when you're happy, then it doesn't care if they're if you're sad. Yeah. It does doesn't fulfill them in any sort of way. Yeah. They just don't want to see you doing better than them. They don't want to see you last smile, and it just be, becomes an it becomes a thing where you let it affect you. And I feel like the people that you have around, it does play a part because they can have like yo like you may feel like you're a piece of shit. But you're not. So let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go live life the way you you deserve. Right. And I'm gonna get you out of this. I'm gonna help you. Switching gears. Your what did it take for you to start deadlifting, lifting heavy as as shit in chan class? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing was like um, I didn't ever get to deadlift in high school or college because it's not. Believe it or not, deadlifts isn't optimal for sports performance. Yeah. Like, if I want to be a great football player, I'm not going to have you do a bunch of deadlifts. Like, that's a slow movement thing. Unless you're, like, an a O-line or D-line person. Yeah. But that, like, power and velocity is so much different than if you're doing a slow lift like that. So, I didn't touch deadlifts. But I remember when I was young, I was 14, 15 years old, and some dude was doing uh, deadlifts. And I had never touched a deadlift before. And he had, I think it was 545 on the bar. And I just, like, oh, let me, let me whatever. Mm-hmm. And I picked it up. And I was, I've never touched a deadlift before. And 545, never touching a deadlift before, is absolutely insane. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, <laughs> You ain't normal, I mean, bro. I, I, you up, ain't... I think I grabbed that shit with the ball back, and I was like scared cat, and I was like shaking and shit. And if it was like, you're going to hurt your back, like don't do it like that. And I was like, fuck it, I ain't going to hurt my back, so I'm never touching shit ever again. Yeah. And then all I did was I went and did bench press for the next like six years of my life. And then I hurt my shoulders. So like I got out of college, and I remember... I got my CSCS, so it was like strength, a certified strength conditioning specialist, and I was working under my mentor who uh, went on to be the New York Giants head strength coach for like eight years. Oh, to me, he's the best strength coach in the world. Like, yeah. that's my dude. He's the reason why I became who I am, and still to this day, I'm trying to aspire to be him. His name's Aaron Wellman. He's with Indiana State University right now, but he was with uh, New York Giants for a long time. And I remember um, coming out of college and then feeling lost, and I was a trainer at 24 Hour Fitness, and then this guy came in. Um, I forgot his name is Dean. I forgot the rest of his name, but uh, he came in and he was wearing this powerlifting shirt. And then I had just been getting to strength training or whatever. And I was like, uh, box squatting, doing all those things. And uh, he was like, Oh, I'm a professional powerlifter. I was like, That's a sport. Like, there's, <laughs> that people do that shit. Like, I'm strong as real? fuck. Like, for real. He's like, He's looking at my number. He's like, uh, if you compete, you know that you do very well, right? And I had touched, I haven't touched a deadlift. So I was like, Whatever. Um, I just kept thinking about that and it kind of like resonated with me like that yeah. i always loved lifting like no matter what if my dad wasn't there for me my family wasn't there for me the death the, that was the there. back squats were and then the bench press were and the barbell was and i just kept thinking about that like maybe i should make a career out of it like maybe i should like really um invest myself see where it goes yeah and see what happens right so i just started deadlifting and i think within like the first like couple months i deadlifted like 675 and like seven plates and i was like damn i can really do something with this, you know? Damn. And actually, the first competition I ever did is the, is the competition I met Big Boy for yeah. the Strength Cartel. So, like, that, it was just, like, one of those things that I had no idea about, and I just knew I had something. Yeah. And I loved it, and I just leaned into stuff that I loved. I ran with it. And I ran with it. And then I ended up being really fucking good at it. And then, because my first, my my main focus as a strength conditioning specialist was sports performance. Yeah. So, I had a, I had a decision to make, because I had, like, 20... I think it was like 20 to 25 um, NFL guys that were working with me. And we were doing like um, sports performance and weight room stuff, running stuff, all those things. And I was getting guys prepped for the combines. That was my initial uh, like, profession Yeah, was prepping people for the NFL. And then one day I started doing the powerlifting stuff. And then I realized that Damn. that shift right there, because one, NFL guys were only here for three to four months of training. And when they left, I had to fill in those spots with normal average day living people personal training. So I was like, I might as well make this shift to something that I love and to people that can be with me year round. And then when I started my team and obviously I was like the head coach for like strength cartel and all those things, then I realized that this is where I need to be. You ran everybody's program. Yeah. Yeah. So Pitbull, I coached Pitbull, uh, big boy, everybody that was on the team. I coached. Oh, so shit. Gino, Bruce, all those guys. Yeah. Those, those were all my athletes. And at one point I was like one of the top coaches in the world. Cause I had like X amount of guys with 2000 pound totals, like, a couple six hundred pound benchers, like all those things. You were you were Pitbull's coach when he was like number two, no? Yeah, yeah. So when he was in the one one eighty ones, he was like did really well. Did the U.S. Open? I coached him to all the U.S. Open uh, meets. Big boy, all the U.S. Open meets. They were with uh, someone named Chad Wesley Smith, 
uh, before me, which was like a really big deal for me because I was a huge fan of this guy, Chad Wilson Smith. So like yeah. the moment that um, I felt fulfilled as a professional, as a strength conditioning coach, was he he had worked with Big Boy before and then Big Boy had switched over to me because he wanted it in-house, like the strength cartel, like one coach, all those things like that. That's yeah. what people came, came to me too. I did a really good job in coaching Big for the U.S. Open. He actually um, tore his tricep three weeks into to training. And then I, I maneuvered around it, and he still ended up benching almost 600 pounds at the meet, which was like five weeks down the road from when he tore his tricep. So he, did, he won the U.S. Open and, and, you know, did really well, all those things. And I remember the moment that Chad Wesley Smith came up to me and gave me, though, that, that the accolades of, like, hey, dude, congratulations. I saw what you did with Big, and, like, that was, like, a, uh, you did an amazing job. That was the moment that I was, like, I fucking made it, dude. Like, holy <laughs> shit, dude. I used to look up to this guy. I used to read this guy's books and shit. Yeah. And now I'm sitting here, and, I'm, and now I'm being, like, you know, in the same room as him being respected. Yeah. So that was, like, the, one of the moments I became, like, a real, in my mind, a strength coach. But then it, I had already found my, my groove with, like, my style of training. And then I was always a mental coach, too. Like, I don't want to just coach you on just the lifts. I want to teach you how to prepare for the lifts. I want to teach you how to, if you do hit failure, how to lean into that and then find out more about yourself when you do fail. Yeah. Because that's, that's the biggest indicator of change and learning is failure. If I hit the same weight, if I hit something right now and I'm successful doing it, there's the chances of me going back to that and being like, well, what could I have done, to, done better with that lift? Opposed to if I fail that shit, I'm like, what did I do wrong with that lift? Because I did something wrong, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Is it the strength's not there? Was my preparation shit? So, like, I am I use everything I do in powerlifting and then the, my preparation for a big lift, I use that for life. Yeah. How I approach life situations, the not overthinking, the walking up to a barbell, having a ritual in terms of when, it's when something hard comes my way, what's my rituals in which I'll do to that prepare. I'll go through it and so I won't think as much through it so I can actually deal with the problem and not deal with my head and my mind. Yeah, right? fuck yeah. Because I see that's the biggest thing is that I see people second guess themselves when they walk up to a weight they've never done. And when they do fail, the more likely them failing that weight in the future again, again, if they don't actually yeah. dive in and find out what's going on with their head and their mind, and their body, Facts. it's going to be high. I think that's, but you can also apply that to just life in general. A hundred percent. That hundred percent. They see the failure before they even see yep. the success. Yep. And that's why they don't even touch. Like everybody, how we said it. And I feel like we're going in a circle, but everybody's just gifted in their own ways. Like, you will never know how big you can shine mm -hmm. until you go into the spotlight. Yeah. You have no idea. So everything you have done, tapping into strength, have, tapping into your coaching, men, mental, and everything, like for you yourself, what what's that one phrase that you tell yourself and it h hits you? Like when you're going through your own personal stuff. Like, it's funny. When you're saying this, I'm like I was actually saying a saying in my head that I use, and it is lean into the suck. So you lean into the shitty parts. Like, the times in my life that I get anxiety about doing something or I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want to do it. It's like either the stage is so big or the lights are so big. The other side of that yeah. is monumentous compared to where I am right now. And I remember Will Smith had this quote when he was going to go uh, jump off a helicopter skydiving. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. He was talking about like, the whole night before. Like, I'm fucking nervous. I can't sleep. I'm scared. I'm scared of what's going to happen. What if the parachute doesn't open? What if I die? What if, what if all those things happen when I'm going up? The second I jump off, I'm free. Yeah. I don't think of fucking nothing. I'm, like, enjoying the moment. Excellent. So in those moments, I realized that if I leaned into the suck, like, the moments that I think that are going to be shitty or, like, somewhere I don't want to go. Like, say if a friend invites me out and I'm like, fuck, bro, I really don't fucking want to go. I want to make an excuse. Like, I don't want to go. Usually at the other end of those excuses is something great. Yeah. And I would I would lean into that suck and be like, all right, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to um, just just see what, what happens. Like, and just go have fun or whatever. And then I meet someone that wants to do business with me. And then I meet someone that has valuable inf information for me or another nice. connection that down the road can make me a ton of money or, like, influence whatever. Yeah. And that it's happened every single time there was on the other end of me not wanting to do something. Yeah. And so, like, even with my lifting... That's the one thing, too. People would get done with their lifting and be like, uh, what are we going to do next? What, what's the next lift you want to do? And you're like, uh, I don't feel like doing that. that. That shit hurts too much. Like, in that moment, I'd be like, that's what we're doing. If I was working out with the guys, they'd be like, oh, I don't feel like doing that. I'm like, that's exactly what we're fucking doing. Because we're going to lean into the suck because that's the shit that you're avoiding. Yeah. If you, if you avoid it today, you're going to avoid that shit tomorrow and next week, the week after that. Now yeah. we have an imbalance. You make an excuse. You make exactly. it again and again so and again. That was the biggest thing for me was 
find out what the things that I hate the most and do those to the the amount of capability that I would do the things I love. Yeah. And then I became such a balanced, more person, wiser, uh, athlete, all those things, all the above came. It was from me leaning into the suck. Have they asked you like, if you stayed all natural throughout your whole lift, your whole career? So I actually, um, went through like, so the TRT stuff. Okay. Yeah. So like that, it's hard. Cause then you have this big persona of like steroids and all this stuff. But then as a man, when you get older, when you hit past 30, your testosterone drops. No matter what. <laughs> like, that's just physics. Like, the, uh, the physiological things about your body. Yeah. So you have to, like, have some type of replacement therapy if you're going to actually do stuff. Like, if you're going to make this a fucking career yeah, and everything. Yeah, and I know Pitbull's open with it. Yeah. I mean, some people are, like, really weary about it. But I think it's important to know, too, because you can become depressed off of hormone imbalance. So getting a panel done, realizing what is, what is a safe way for me to get my levels more balanced out. Mm. Because a lot of times, if your estrogen is, is off balance between your testosterone and all those things, you can cause depression. And I feel for women because if your estrogen's off, you don't feel right, dude. Like, say, yeah. if, say if, like, my estrogen's high and I got, like, a panel done of, like, okay, I want to see where my levels are at. If I have high estrogen, low testosterone, I'm crying a lot. I'm, like, <laughs> legit, like, crying over nothing, bro. Like, yeah. like I fucking uh, ran over a, a leaf. And I'm like, oh, the leaf? What what's the what, what the leaf deserve that? Like, that type of shit where I'm telling you, you really feel, like, yeah. you know what I mean? You don't feel right. So, like, yeah. I, I decided... Because I had that point in my career, right? Like, uh, you have these people that think that's, like, it's not even steroids. It's more just hormone replacement stuff, right? Yeah. And if, if I can get my body to a place that, um, like, say if I was, like, 18 or 19 years old and I'm training hard like I was then, then that's where I came. And that there's a big stigma behind it, a really yeah. bad stigma. you got the uh, rich pianos of the world that are taking, like, uh, way too much. And there's, there's a difference between taking something for hormones and taking something as, like, an anabolic thing. Like, so if you're saying, like, trend or anything like that, yeah. that's where the, the conversation gets really tricky. Because I think right now the, the big thing in the sport, even, like, bodybuilding, like, bro, like, young athletes are just, yep. and everybody just wants to throw it on, oh, you're, they're, they were taking this, this, this. Yeah. It's like, all right, so what is, like, that's so the why. one thing is SARMs is so bad for you. Like, that's one of the biggest things that's out right now on TikTok yeah. and all those things is SARMs. Like, SARMs grows everything as a whole. And if you have cancerous cells, they'll grow that shit too. So, like, that's the, the bad part too is that, that you don't know that you're actually growing everything in you. What the And hell? it's almost like a human growth hormone in, in that sense, right? So, yeah, you have that. You'll always have the guys that say stuff about, like, if you take something. But yeah. if, you, if you're a man and you're, like, 28, 29 years old and you go to the doctor right now and get your panel done, they'll literally prescribe you testosterone. Because they'll look at your panel and be like, damn, you got the testosterone of an alley cat, bro. Like, what are you even doing? How is your shit even getting hard right now? Like, that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? So they'll actually prescribe you a little bit just to get back to that point. Yeah. It's all about abuse of, of the products that, that people are, like, really uh, struggling with. Because you do have the people, like, the McGarvers of the world taking all this shit that they shouldn't be taking. Because your body's not supposed to take all that shit. Yeah. Like, your body's supposed to have balanced testosterone and all those things like that. And over time, we can do things that, like, naturally drop those things, like drugs and, like, eating shitty foods. And so over time, we're, like, just withering away as men. That is our men hormone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, it's just yeah. a weird thing. I mean, um, I've actually never spoken up about it, but I have no problem speaking about it. It's uh, it's a natural thing. And as young athletes, you don't need that shit. Like, if, if, if I were to get a, a panel done of an 18-year-old kid, he would have the same uh, testosterone level as a guy that's 30 that's taking shit. So, like, in those positions from, like, when you're, like, 14 years old to, like, 27 years old, you have to stay natural. Yeah. You have to, like, not go the route of, like, overdoing it quickly because you're going to shut down your natural productions. And then now you're going to have to be on the rest of your life. There was, like, an old video. Damn, it's, like, a couple years. But it was, I think they're, like, from New York. And it was, one again, it's an old, old video. But he was talking about taking testosterone, this, this, this. He was, like. I have to be taking testosterone for the rest of my life. My yeah. body will not produce it no yeah. more. But he was like, but, you know, we're here. We're working hard, lifting this. We're looking yeah. good. So it's all right. Yeah. But so it's you could take things to be, um, so this is this is the way I explain it. You could take enough so that your nuts still work and that you're getting yourself to an honest and healthy level. And there's if you take more than that, your nuts shut off. And you stop producing testosterone naturally. Mm -hmm. So that that's where... You have that gray area of people see what it can do for them, and they're like, oh, shit, I can gain more muscle this way, and they overdo it. Yeah. They shut their own natural production off, and then now they need it for the rest of their lives if they're if they're on for way too long. Yeah. So, like, you could take it in a very healthy and, like, uh, responsible way, Thanks. but that's also what compounds you're taking, too. So that's, that's the area of which people don't really 
talk about because it is a really red area that people like either you're natural or you're not natural and then anywhere in between that is like shut the fuck up type shit you know what i mean yeah. like it's either you are or you're not right what it, what can you tell us was the highlight of your life So generally, it would, if I looked at it and it said, taking back, look, looking like my, back. Uh, wait, I was thinking about this earlier. I was thinking about a position in my life that I was like really happy about. Because li- looking back, and again, uh, we are blessed. Right? I mean, we're fortunate. And how you said earlier, when you parked at the convention center, it was a whole turnaround. And for me, it's the same because I seen you at. At the convention center, I seen you at the at the expos, and we're going up to you guys, and you know, saludando or like, yo, like we seen it, like, bro, I'm amazed, blah, blah blah. To we're in your hometown, yeah, we're out here at the Hard Rock podcasting with you now, yeah, and it's yeah. crazy because yeah. it, now it's a full full circle, full circle, yeah. Like, yo, I was watching you guys' videos, we met you, took time, now we're doing this, and this is our part of our lives, and we're mm-hmm. just like. This is fucking crazy. Yeah, which is kind of crazy, too, is because, like, um, I'm a big feelings person, and I get hit up a lot about doing podcasts and, like, doing videos and stuff, and for whatever reason, you guys, like, just stood out for me, and, like, that that resonated with me because it just, I'm a big feelings guy, and I don't usually open up DMs and anything like that, but for whatever day, that day, I was, like, I looked at yours, and I was, like, you know what? Yeah, let's fucking, and I, was, I had that. That, that was the fangirl, bro. I seen, I, seen, I seen the message back. I was, like. No way. Yeah. <laughs> like he, like, he yeah, he texted yeah. it. I was like, yeah. I was like, bro, no way. <laughs> he messaged me back. And I was That's like, what's up, I was bro, like, yeah. dude, let, let's run it. I mean, we took time, but how you said earlier, like the man above puts us in positions mm-hmm. where we need to be. Maybe at that time when we, when we set it out, maybe it wasn't. Yeah. And this weekend was, was, was yeah. that moment was yeah. like, yo, like we're out here now. We're yeah. doing this. So, I mean, I appreciate you for, dude, no, you know, you. getting, yeah. Actually saying yes to us yeah. when, how you said, you've been offered all these other times. Yeah. And for us, for some re- way, way or another, I mean, we we, we set this down. Yeah. I mean, I just look at life in a way that you have to trust your gut feelings. Yeah. And a lot of those times that we don't trust those gut feelings. <laughs> and I think during one. that time, I had been gone through, like, some meditation. And I was like, and you hit me up. And on a, uh, when I was in that, that stage of, like, wanting to do more, too. Yeah. So, like, I have all these, like, opportunities that come to me. But I know that. What, what fits with me in my mind and my intuition. Yeah. And for whatever reason, like you guys, <laughs> oh, you crazy. know, like you guys like hit home yeah. for me. So I, I decided that. I wanted to. Yeah. And I uh, really appreciate you having me and everything. Nah, man, definitely. But, you know, the people that are watching, you know, they tune into us, but it's mostly for our guests. Mm-hmm. You being the star, being the dude with the platform, the voice, like they want to know about you. Yeah. And I think throughout this podcast, people got to know a little bit more about you that maybe they didn't know. Yeah. Like, everybody sees your reels, everybody sees your messages, everybody sees the message you put out, your story, but no one really gets to know the man behind that platform right. until they come on a podcast or they start, I mean, I know you did it one podcast, with, what was it, Pitbull? Yeah. And I seen that, and those are, these type of platforms is where you can get, you can get to talk about things that you don't regularly put right. on that right. platform. So, like, for you, like, your top moment, like where you felt at your highest, mm-hmm. what was that for you? Was it at the expos? Was it when you're with Strain Cartel? Is it now? Is it, like what is it? Mm-hmm. So like now, so if you would ask Chris ten years ago, it would have been a really cr- like different answer, right? And yeah. we're in so many different parts of our lives now. Now my best moments are spent with my kids acknowledging my love, and then that that to me now is powerful. But then that comes from my fulfillment. My, my biggest goal in my life is to help f- people find the power that they can't see in themselves. Thanks. And part of that was because I found mine and I realized how valuable that was. So that now I, I try not to get wrapped up in the fulfillment of getting a lot of views, getting a lot of comments, shares, whatever. Those aren't the things that I'm worried about now. It's the message that I'm giving. It's not the volume, but the message, right? Yeah. And then so now the things that I value the most are the things that my kids are saying. You know, them valuing. So, like, one of the my, – my daughter just graduated from pre-K, like, yesterday. Ooh. That moment for me is in Dude. my top three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That moment standing up watching my daughter succeed is, is something that I can't explain if, if, like, they don't have children, you know? Yeah. And then – so I've had this, like, change of, of, like I said, being full to being fulfilled. And then 
back then it was the views it was the notoriety all those other things but now it's i see my fulfillment in others i see how i impact others and the imprint that i make and then yeah. i get to see them find the value in themselves and that's what fucking matters to me right yeah. so like when i when people come up to me now because i'm i'm always been very humble and i don't always like to give myself credit where i, I know i need credit but when i walk out and people stop me on the street and they're like Dude, oh my God! Like, dude, you've done so much for me. I can't believe I'm running into you right now. It's and then, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those moments are so cool, and it's because I'm. I, I've promised myself I'd always be genuine. I would always be never too big to reach down, and I would never be too big to not talk to somebody. Like, and at those expos, that's why I feel like people really love this too, is because I would take someone aside and talk to them by themselves if they had a story to tell me, yeah. and they're like, "Dude, fucking right, dude. Good for you. Like, I'm, I'm fucking proud of you." You know what I'm saying? And saying that, if someone's looking up to me, yeah, that it, is impactful. It's yeah, right? it's fulfilling. Yeah. You're just like, dude, he just told me he's proud of me. Dude, 100%. And and that's the thing. Like, I feel like we don't, a lot of people don't get that that recognition from even their own family or yeah. anybody. So even someone random, hey, I'm proud of you. Yeah. They're just like, wait, what? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, be proud. I'm proud of you. Like, you, right, like you've fucking done yeah. it. Because it, it just goes a long way. I don't know what the fuck you're going through personally. But regardless, I'm, I'm going to show you love because I know you need yeah. it. And mm -hmm. during that time, I'm telling you, something told me to tell you. Yep. Like yesterday, we're <laughs> at, at the club, and when you go to the restroom, obviously, there's always someone that's giving you the paper towels, that's giving you the, the soap. And there was an older lady in there, yeah. a Hispanic lady. And I was like, oh, like Spanish. Like, hey, how are you? She's like, I'm doing good. And I'm like, dude, you're in a restroom full of men. And you're here working, yeah. like you're living. I'm sure she gets her wages, but you're you're getting tips. Yeah. So I mean, we had I had some a little bit of money, and I just gave it to her. She yeah. was looked at it like seguro, and I was like, yeah, like I'm like something told me I got to give it to you. Yeah. I was like, I'm very glad I met you. A couple minutes later, or like thirty minutes later, came back, and she was like, can I give you a hug? Yeah, I'm dude, like, it's powerful. I'm like, damn. That's I'm the like, one thing that I don't think people talk about, vibration. That the vibration of you doing that for somebody gives off a certain vibration yeah. that you receive later on. Like, it, it's an attraction thing, right? Yeah. Like, speaking of that, <laughs> yeah. yesterday, that so real, dude. I haven't bought, like, little scratcher tickets um, for a while, and I had 20 bucks. I was like, oh, well, which one's good? And this was before we left L.A. and everything. Oh, I think this one's good. And I was like, oh, number one looks good to me. Got it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to scratch it right now and I get a Target, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? Nah. Yeah. It's my boy's birthday. He deserves it. Yeah. So gave it to him when we when we touched down and we got in the room. He's like, oh, I'm going to scratch it. Not even like five seconds later, it starts going, bro, I want 50 bucks. Hell yeah. I'm like, dude, it was cool. Like, I spent 20. Like, yeah, you already yeah. made 50. Second, like, two seconds later, dude, another 50 bucks. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah. We're not even done. Yeah. Ended up being 500. Oh, shit, for real? Yeah. Damn. I've That's never, love. I've never yeah. scratch, scratched anything that amount. Like, he was just like, bro, what the fuck? I was like, yeah. Something told me, like, yeah. you had this. Yeah. And it's that, the vibration, you know, giving to others mm -hmm. fulfills me. That's but, why I low key fuck with Steve will do it. And when you hand out those beers, I was like, hey, this is kind of right. Because Gino put me on that shit like two months ago. Shout out Gino, bro. Yeah, shout out to G Money, my money man, Simply G, San Diego. Shout out to Steve will do it. Um, but he showed me those videos and was like, bro, we got to do something like this. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, like, this is so dope. Like, changing people in a way that that vibration, their whole life is altered because of what you did for them. Facts. That's something that I want to get to. That's that. Good. The whole thing about if your life vest isn't on and you're trying to save somebody else from drowning, like, you may save somebody else, yeah. but throughout that journey, like, you're going to drown. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. Like, you're going to give your life and happiness to others, yet you're going to go back into a little hole. You're going to be so depressed. And it's like, when is it your turn? Yeah. When do you deserve to be yeah. happy? When do you deserve to have it all? Yeah. And the main thing is it's now. The word of the why is, like, if people are struggling with that, like, yo, your time is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not the next day. Maybe you you think you may not be ready today, but you said earlier, take your time. One yeah. step at a time. Yeah. One minute, one hour. Everything's about perspective, I think. Yeah. And even if we look at the perspective of, like, the life vest thing, I can say, oh, if, if, if there's some honorability, if I go 
save you without putting my vest on and then I drown. Yeah. But I changed my perspective. I'm like, I'm not just trying to save you. I'm trying to save everybody else too, bro. Yeah. Like, so if I put my vest on and I have myself and the capabilities of saving others more at a higher rate, why wouldn't I do that? It's all about perspective. Yeah. Right? We, we were talking on the way to San Diego. We we're just talking about that. Like platform isn't everything, right? Numbers ain't, ain't everything. But I was like, yo, if I only have a hundred followers, I'm only going to f- touch those hundred followers. But if we grow and we get 10,000, mm-hmm. yeah. the platform of us trying to help more people, yeah. it grows. Because it, if you have what they say, like, oh, if you change one person live, it's it's everything. But that person is only going to tell maybe one or two other people. But if you grow your platform yeah. and you can help 10 times that amount, yep. that's bigger. Yep. My my whole goal is, like, when I go 10 feet on the ground, what am I remembered as? Yep. Is it a guy that just had dreams and mm-hmm. one day – they were going to be fulfilled, and unfortunately, now they're not. Or, hey, that guy did it. Yeah. And he's helped me so much. I fuck and with you, dog. You know I what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I fuck with this. Yeah, tough. Like, like, I'm glad I did this podcast because you really are, like, a depiction of, like, how I think of things. Yeah. It, it's taken a Yeah. It's um, it's taken a lot, bro. Like, yeah. when I say I endured pain, I endured pain because I lost my grandpa. I lost my uncle. I lost my best friend. And that's the pain that I took in. Right. That's the pain that, like, I mean, fuck. <laughs> Two, a couple of days ago, I was already, I was just crying. It was my grandpa's birthday. Yeah. I remember those times, but I use that pain to get me through a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, I tell a lot of people, like, yo, whatever we're doing, trust me, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of mental health that fighting demons and now, fuck it, join me. Fucking, I'll dance with my demons all day. Yeah. But I know I got to get up the next yeah. day. I got to get up no matter what. Like, yeah. I got people that depend on me, my kids depend on me, my family, my team. I got to do it, but trust me, when I'm going to be selfish, I'm going to be selfish when I know I got to take care of me. I take care of me in in certain ways that, you know what, you may not understand it, and it's going to the gym, and it's listening to a sad song, crying for two, three minutes. As soon as I get to work, wipe them off, boom, let's go. It's rock, because we take a lot. Like, we got to put a lot of shit on our back that people don't know, and until we do it and give ourselves those flowers, like, yo, Chris, you fucking did it, dog. Like, yeah. you literally endured all that pain from all the other people and your own self, yeah. and you and you thrive through that darkness. Yeah. There's light at the end of that of that tunnel, yeah. and it's going through those dark clouds. Inky Johnson said it best: "You're not the same animal that comes out out of not after that all. after that storm. Mm-hmm. You will be different. Yeah. You're a different monster. Yeah. We're the we're the same monster, same fools that that when we grew up, but we're different. Yeah. We just look at shit differently, yeah. like." We be, people can't be judgmental. You're tatted, you're buff, you're huge, and be like, oh, that was an asshole when you meet him. Yeah. I'm just a cuddly teddy bear, yeah. dog. Like, <laughs> you see guys that are, like, buff and all that shit, and they're soft as baby shit, too. So it's, yeah. like, it's like the depiction of what the eyes tell you is not what the mind says. You know yeah, I'm and I think that's why I fuck with you a lot, and everybody that follows you fuck with you, too, because your messages that you put out and the platform that you have that you're using, like, it doesn't just, like, it's this big ego lifts and everything. Yeah. It's like, yo, it's, me tocaste el alma, you touched my heart, bro. Yeah. Like, what you said, I could be big and tough. Yeah. Hell yeah, big body. Yeah. But fuck, I want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing is that most of us big guys, we have so much pent up shit because we weren't allowed to cry. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to cry. My dad beat my ass if he saw me crying. But then to the point that I started, like, actually feeling emotions. Yeah. It's not till I became a great friend great neighbor a great father a great cousin brother whatever those are the moments that i realized in my life that i had value in others is when i decided that i was going to open myself to the realm of like i can cry still in yeah. a damn that fucking notebook movie that shit was sad like i felt that shit right like i cried at those movies and once i started getting to the position of like i can feel those emotions yeah. not till i become Fully into my power, who I was, yeah. And I've been around cast that be like, "Hey, homie, don't fucking cry like that, bro. Don't fucking, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you guys are all crazy. Like, oh, yeah. all right, are you gonna fucking be like that? But then, then you start realizing those guys are in a different part of their journey. Yeah, yeah. They haven't reached the point in which they felt like they weren't fulfilled in terms of what they were going through. So they'll go through it, yeah. but they don't mean it has to be on my dime. Like I can go through it quicker than them. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's again, it goes through how how far ahead is your life and how far ahead are you like thinking already? Mm-hmm. I like said you, when you bruise G money, everybody like you were just ahead of everybody's time that now you're sitting here. And because I feel like we're ahead of our time also, like we just met. And now that we're meeting our perspective and views are pretty similar of how we need to carry life, how we got to be yeah. happy. How can we help others be happy and see what they really got? So now it's about energy. Yeah. 
when we introduce each other, when we see each other, when we see anybody that we love, it's not just handshake, hey, how you doing? It's like, yo, what's up? Yeah. Let me give you a hug, bro. Let me, like, yeah. maybe that hug that we just gave each other, maybe we both just needed it. Yeah. And it's like embracing, embrace your your people, embrace your loved ones, hug your loved ones, tell your loved ones, guys and girls, I love you. Yeah. If you really love them yeah. and you stand everything behind them, they know it. I'm like, yo, when I say I love you, I mean everything. The good and bad. Yeah. You come with me with problems, you're calling me at two, three in the morning, crying. I don't give a fuck. We answering. But that's just what goes behind it. Because people throw that those I love you out. And when time comes that you need them, yeah. nowhere to be found. Yeah. Nowhere. Just I'm because sure. you're not just because you're not partying anymore, you're not fucking around, just because you're not doing this, that. Oh, man, you change. You can't be yeah. with us. Yeah. Like, fuck it. It's life. You yeah. got to change. And when I started changing my perspective, it like, once I started analyzing my journey yeah. and be like, I damn, I, I don't fuck with these people because back in the day, something happened to me that, like, made me feel that way towards that action. Yeah. Once you start, like, putting that towards other people, too, then you start realizing that they don't know what they do. Yeah. And they're just going and they're going through the motions of what was taught through them, you know. Facts. And so that I was able to maneuver people the way I see fit on how I understood why they were acting the way they were acting. So if I saw that jealousy, I have something that I saw fit for them. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to back off a little bit. I understand that you you aren't in the right space of the head right now that you're, like, looking at me and judging me. Yeah. So I'm going to go do me. And then when I need to love you, I'll come back and love you. When you're receptacle of that, like you want it, you want that love. Yeah. I'll come back and give you that love. Yeah, like maybe right now our love will not match, mm-hmm. but maybe down the line it's it's perfect. Yeah, it's it's 100%. the right time, and it's just life, bro. Yeah, 100%. life life is crazy, and I've said it the last couple of days. Life is a bitch, but it keeps moving on. Yeah, it does. Life is hard, when, but it's going to keep like going. Whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, yeah. the time is gonna is gonna change. The days are gonna keep going by, so it's up to you when you want to take take. Reigns of your own life and do whatever you want. Yeah. And it's all about vibration. To me, it's all about vibration. So, like, to me, yeah, there's loyalty in time, right? Yeah. You've been there for a minute. Like, you were there for me when 10, 15 years ago. Nothing, yeah, but yeah. when you vibrate at a certain rate and then someone enters that vibration at that same moment and then that same vibration, you can expedite the process in which time gets you to, right? Mm-hmm. So, I can, I can be vibing with you, right? And then, like, it's our vibration is the same. You could call me tonight and I'd be there for you because of, we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. So we expedited the time of friendship for 10, 15 years. And you might buy bypass people that have been in my life for five, six years purely because we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. Right. Because, because I understand your morals are like my morals and, and things that you want from your life are the things that I've either done or I'm doing too. Yeah. And so that you support people in the same movement as you. And not everybody in your life yeah. is meant to stay in your life. It's not, not at all. <laughs> Sometimes people are just lessons. They're just lessons. They're, they're just here today, gone tomorrow, and the lesson's still there. But they're not, and that's fine. Yeah. It truly is. It's okay to lose people. It's mm-hmm. okay for people to fall out of your life or whatever the case is. Just know they taught you a lesson. Take those lessons and run with mm-hmm. them because life is short. Yeah. And shit, it keeps going, bro. So if you lose the person, don't lose the lesson. Oh, if you lose the person, don't lose the lesson. <laughs> There, yeah. period, period. I, <laughs> I think that's a good one to end it. I know you got your graduation to be with your boys, but Chris, and when I say I am honored, we're honored and blessed to have you sitting Seriously, here with us, bro. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, you said it earlier. This was a full life circle from yeah. watching you at the expos, watching your, your pages, and you doing your thing. To now actually sitting with you Appreciate here shit, in fucking your own city, yeah. like it's it's humbling. It's it's a uh, how do I call it? It's a proud moment and it's a special yeah. moment for me because I mean we're here in the moment and I already know after the tag after this episode the people that I fuck with that are in gym they're gonna be like yo you had them I'm like I did bro it was yeah. wild it was crazy if I could have any words of encouragement man there's a reason why I picked to do this with you guys. And there's a reason why, like, you guys are here right now. So I'll just keep going, dog. You guys are doing the right fucking stuff. Damn. And this is the reason why I'm here is because I know that we, we're going to reach some people that really can make a difference. And I we think did. that's important. Yep. It's so important to do your part in your community to try and change people for the better. And I think that that's why you guys are doing what you're doing. And I fuck with you guys because of that shit. We appreciate so don't you, stop. Dog. I know it's hard. I know it gets tough. But don't fucking stop. Yeah. Fuck the cameras right now. Like, don't stop. You're doing what you're doing, and I fucking appreciate you guys. Don't fucking stop doing it, please. For real, genuinely. Damn. From the bottom of my heart. Nah, please bro. Please don't stop. This is important shit. Dude, this, 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 is, this is that, um, given, you just gave us the flowers, and it takes a lot for, 
for me and us to like, you know, when someone tells us that, we're just like, damn, bro. Like, I don't even know you. You're telling us this. I don't even know you. After today, I do a little bit more. But I want to tell you, you don't stop, dog. Hey. Everything you have endured, hey. everything, all the Thank pain, you. all the Thank platform. You. Like, you got to give yourself the flowers because because of you, it's helped a lot of people. Yeah. And because of you, a lot of other people's lives are going to have some light in there. And that light is just huge. It keeps going. And don't judge my dude by the tattoos and the muscles because this yeah. was just a genuine ass yeah, motherfucker. I really, I appreciate that, man. Thank I'm taking so the shot. You want to? Uh, of course I do. Damn. What do you want? Do you want the holler head or you want Terramana? Whatever, whatever you're doing. Whatever you want. This, I can do this that is you. Too. Yeah, we'll go there. Shout out to The Rock. Shout out to The Rock. The Rock, the Rock one day we'll have you on, bro. Is there? He's family, I guess. <laughs> He's family. Have you gone to the homeland? No, not since I was born. No. Like, I, I, bro, I've never been out of the country. Low key, I've never been. Out. I went to TJ like once and my appendix exploded, <laughs> and I never went back. Dude, like, dude, there's no fucking way I'm getting because I got those adioses. Yeah, bro. Doesn't G do Money that. travel? He travels everywhere. He don't take me. <laughs> <laughs> I got kids. Fuck, I got, I got uh, responsibilities. It's different. <laughs> yeah, it's, different. it's different. Like, hey, come out here. Yeah, I'm like, it's different. Oh, my son was gonna watch my kids, bro. <laughs> but ca- realizing that, dude. catch us next week at Pico Rivera with yeah. everybody over there. But if you haven't tuned in, make sure you subscribe. You follow all the pages, the TikTok shit. The movement is fucking growing, and we're not stopping. After we just said, we fucking definitely not stopping. We're taking this shit to a whole nother level. First time out here in San Diego, podcasting outside of our city. So first to many, Chris, thank you. Cheers, man. Thank hey, you so toast. much for having me. Thank you, man. Cheers to you guys. Yes, sir. They all taking shots, too. Easy. Oh. Yeah. Let's take a shot. Shout out to Rock, to Ramana. I'm sure I'm family with him some way, somehow. <laughs> they say I'm the Mexican one, but yeah, we're good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'll take one you don't want one? <laughs> After yesterday, she <laughs> Yeah. And she got a, a vodka Red Bull yesterday. She's like, what is this? Oh, that's that crack. <laughs> that's what that is. That's, hey, that's like that Four loco shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Fucking Dylan. But, yeah, shout out to Rock. Shout out Knock Boys, Full Sand. Again, we only pretty much drink Happy Dads here. That's what's up. I've actually never had it before. It's it dope. Shout out. Cheers. There it is. Bam, Cheers. bam. You got a chaser? What a... Ooh, we got the holler head. Huh? Oh, so right now we are... We had to put it back on camera because we're talking about TikTok and the abilities of how much you can grow on TikTok. Yeah. So when... <laughs> We went to Oxnard for House of Gains gym. I had David on the podcast. Great fucking episode. Shout out them. We went over there to Oxnard. We did a whole fucking mental health day with everybody. Nice. Um, we went to the gym. Then we went out to eat. Came back. Whatever. Throughout the week, the For You page came up. Mm-hmm. And I recognized the gym. I'm like, damn, I know that fucking gym. Because it says House of Gains in the back. Mm-hmm. I know the red racks. Yeah, I've seen them before. Yeah. yeah, I know the red racks. And I was like, yo, like. This is fucking sick. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, she posted, like, her music taste is, is fucking great, genuine Norteñas. So she's posting Norteña music uh-huh. at the gym. Yeah. And I was like, I fuck with this. So I liked it, followed her on IG, and then she posted a internship that she was doing. I'm like, yo, like, I'm trying to get bigger, grow more. And I'm like, what's better than somebody that's brand new to this? Yeah. That's already in that type of field. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not educated in none of this shit. I learned it. I was like, yo, like, come out. I, I need someone that's going to help us grow, like, social yeah. media, this, this, and this. And I was like, yo, I found the video of you <laughs> putting a Norteña at a gym. Like, I think <laughs> she was, like, deadlifting. I'm like, I've never seen that. Yeah. But now it's like the growth of TikTok. Yeah. Because of TikTok, we landed Duno. Because of Duno and TikTok, and the growth on TikTok, we went from like 20K to 40. Hell yeah. We went from 600 subscribers on YouTube to now 1,300. And it keeps growing daily. I'm like, bro, and I tell everybody like, yo, if you don't, if you have, if you just want to post anything and you don't want to do on Instagram, TikTok. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like The platform with TikTok is that's exactly what I tell people too, because it gives everybody the opportunity. Like you get, you get an equal opportunity that I do. If you don't even have a following, yeah. they're gonna open it up to a certain demographic for you to just to see if they fuck with you. Yeah, like being like you being in this whole industry for years, 
people have the same ability to be toe to toe with you. Yeah. Because they're growing in TikTok. Hundred percent. And then back in the day, when we first started out, and then it took us so long to get a following on YouTube and, like, Instagram and that shit. But if you had a following on Instagram, it's still easy for you. Like, what, was your, what was your overhead that you were paying for? It, for what? For YouTube, like, all your whole production. I mean, they like paid a good amount. Like, pe- it was like... Like, pe- people don't know. Like, people, like, the ones that are really doing it, they see what it takes to create content, what it takes to go and do things, yeah. to create content, do this, 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 to put it all together in... X amount of time of a video that you, yeah. everybody's going to see at one point. But there's a lot of back. There's so much that goes into that stuff. I mean, we used to have to do these events, and then we would have to set all these events up. We'd have to coordinate it ourselves. We didn't have assistance. We didn't have nobody to do that stuff for us. So we're really being our own advocate and all that stuff, right? Like, yeah. the, the grind, we, we leaned into that, too. Like, dude, this is kind of dope, our growth right here. Like, flying out to Texas, uh, having to pay for Airbnbs, and, like, that stuff adds up a lot. So when we look at like from net to growth, man, you really th- those areas are very small <laughs> because a, of that reason. Yeah. And people just see the limelight, they see the views, they see all that stuff. Yeah. But they, if you really want to do quality shit, there's a lot of money it takes that goes time. into it. Yeah. But that's the things. That's why I love about uh, TikTok is that I came from that world, the world that was like it's so hard to grow. You have to put quality product and and videos together to get anything. The you gutter, can go fucking yeah. viral right now from you taking a shit and just recording <laughs> yourself on the phone, and you literally change your life like that, right? That's <laughs> her her last, fucked. Dude. Not on the toilet, yeah. but her, her last. What video. are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. You know that is one of the there, so there's this Mexican artist yeah. finally got like off the blacklist here in the United States. So he was trending. Yeah. And she just posted a TikTok of her sister singing the song. Not even looking at the camera, not even like just cleaning, singing, and that shit's like over six hundred something. That, that shit's dope. That's, yeah. Six hundred thousand. Like And that's how it should be. Because we should start valuing uh moments like that. Yeah. Because that's a moment. Be- like your girl be- singing, like Vibing, feeling herself. That's a moment that everybody should share it. <laughs> Cue the video of Angela at the club yesterday. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she, she's like glasses on and she's just like there. Like, yeah. Bad bunny. Yeah, the, bad, bunny. Yeah. bad bunny. Bad bunny. Yeah. Yeah. Like bad bunny? Yeah, I fuck with bad bunny. Yeah. 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 Ye